Hey guys, you guys like comics? I like comics. Let's show off some comics. Alright, this is Nightwing number one of four in his first solo debut. So this is his first like micro series on his own as Nightwing. This came out in 1995. Um, I wanted to get the rest of the four, but they only had the first one. Uh, not a bad little start to the story. Um, I'm kind of doing, getting into Robins and all that these days. So I've been looking into a lot of Robin stuff. So I want to get the, the original Nightwing series, the 1996 series. Uh, but this was there and it was three bucks. So thought it was worth it. This is his first solo comic. Um, I guess they had the Robin series, so you could call that. But this is his first solo as Nightwing. Moving on. Uh, Uncanny X-Men number 282. Uh, Bishop, first appearance, yeah, I, yeah, I guess it's worth it, I don't know, I, I kind of, I was at this store, and it's, uh, it's more of a record store, but he's got a few comics and stuff, and he marks everything basically right based on guide price, um, which can be good in some situations and annoying in other situations, like, uh, he had this marked at seven bucks, uh, that's probably what the max I would pay. It's the uh, newsstand variant, so that's pretty good. Uh, like Bishop's cool, but am I excessive excited? No. It's hard to see on here though. But there's actually I can't tell. If, oh, I don't know if you can see it on here. There's just in all the white. There's like a little bit of crud. It looks like maybe it was just a print error, and there was some like smudging on it. it doesn't really pick up too nicely on the camera, but it's there. So it's kind of a little like. I don't know, maybe a little bit of regret on this one, but I, I'll still keep it. It's nice to have. And new stands, so you can't really go wrong with that. And it's one of those ones I just wanted to get. I want to get a bunch of the X-Men keys, and it was there. So, hey, whatever, that's okay. I get enough good deals that I can handle overspending a little bit. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 149. I can't remember if I showed this one in a different video, but uh, I got this at the tail end of my... Uh, of my comic book store's half off sale and this is the first appearance of Ben Riley. Now this is a really neat issue. Um, it's kind of what they based the whole clone saga on this issue but if you read it, it's really interesting. Basically he, he, the Jackal makes an exact clone of Peter Parker Spider-Man and it's not like an evil clone type idea where you know one's sort of the evil version and he's got you know who the true spider-man is as soon as the clone arrives you have no idea both of them truly believe they're the real spider-man and both of them confusingly fight each other and one of them ends up under a pile of rubble and the series continues so the clone saga sort of started with that because peter moves on thinking like i was the real one right and he's not he's not really a hundred percent sure maybe so when the clone saga starts uh, ben Riley returns thinking he was always the clone and had left. And it turns out that no, it was actually the original Spider-Man who fell under that rubble. And Ben Ry and the clone took over. Um, so a lot of people got mad. The reason that was such a big issue was because basically all the stories between this and, and the clo beginning of the clone saga then are kind of saying they don't really matter or count because it wasn't actually the real Peter Parker the whole time. So so that's why I think a lot of people got really mad, where, like today you have Doc Ock Spidey, where people got mad, but people were on board a little more because it didn't do anything to nullify the previous Spider-Man. It was just more of a different take on it. So this book's in really good condition, though. There's a little bit of spine wear here and a little bit of a crease along the spine. But besides that, the colors are so nice, and it's really crisp edges, nice white whites, and nice uh, bright red and yellow there. I think it's just a beautiful cover, and a really neat book. So happy to have it, and this was half off, so I got it for $20. So yeah, pumped on that. Um, like everyone's been showing off this book, and I kind of got on the bandwagon there. Figured I had to get it at some point and it's true it's a totally underrated book and you can, I've seen these go for 99 cents on eBay which is like mental so what I did with this I made a best offer on this one 
because I wanted one that was really, really nice. And this thing's about as near mint, I think, as you can get. Uh, so I ended up paying, I think, $12 for this, which you can get it cheaper. If I was more patient and just waited, I probably could get it in an auction for even cheaper. But I made the guy an offer he accepted, so there it is. So I'm happy to have like a really, really high grade of this one because it is a key issue. And whenever I have the chance to get a key issue for 12 bucks of like such a key character... Like, I'll spend the extra money. That's fine with me. Uh, what else? Pick this one up from my local shop for uh, cover price. Uh, alias number one. First appearance of Jessica Jones. Uh, cool book. I, I read it, and I really want to get the rest of the series now because I think it's a really neat concept. Um, and obviously the Netflix show is coming out, and she's going to be one of the, the key... Uh, key characters is i think it's gonna be three different shows i think there's gonna be a daredevil show a heroes for hire and an alias show so apparently the alias show is looking really good i heard an interview with bendis and he's pretty excited about it so yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to that show and this book is still really cheap guys like i've seen it on uh seen it on ebay there for still like five dollars plus shipping so uh get it now because you know it's gonna go up and she's a pretty sweet character and worth to have the story anyways get the whole series if you can uh what else damn here's a bigger one batman number 357 first appearance of jason todd and first appearance of killer croc uh now i think most people agree or a lot of people agree that batman has one of the best rogues gallery out there um he he's just got some really cool psychological villains but I always like Killer Croc because he's just, he sort of stands out. He's just the big, dumb monster type guy. Uh, he's got a little more depth than, than, than like just a, just a like feral beast. But uh, he, he's just a good character for Batman, I think, to, to show off that sometimes he just has to go against brute force. It's not always the psychological side of things. So, um, yeah, pumped to have this. And again, like I was saying, I'm trying to, Get in on some of these Rob, key Robin books. So excited to get the first Jason Todd. Um, I actually got two copies of this because I, I bought one. I was re I really wanted it, and I was really looking hard. And went I was making offers around, and I, I made an offer for one, and and he accepted, and I found another, that I had made an offer and got an even better deal. So, I was like, well, I guess, like after you pay, like. I paid, I think it was 50 for the first, and then it was like 40 something, 42 something for the second. So I was like, well, man, I'm just going to accept this and see if I can make some of my money back with my other copy. Because uh, they're both really nice. So I, I got them both and I compared them, and this one was slightly better. Uh, just the color was slightly brighter. There was a time, they both have a little bit of spine damage. This one has a little bit less. And I don't know if it was just in the print run or what, but that one, it was kind of cut up here. It didn't look like it was trimmed. I don't think it was trimmed because apparently when you look to see if these pages are discolored here, if they're trimmed, these will be a lot whiter than the side. Uh, unless someone's really good at it and trims really early and then lets that side fade. Uh, that's one way of telling. So I'm pretty sure it wasn't trimmed. It's just maybe how it was cut, but... I don't know. I just I like this book generally overall more, so I'm gonna keep that one. I'll maybe uh, throw the other one on eBay or something. Uh, sticking with uh, Mr. Ben Riley, Web of Spider-Man 118. I think this is an underrated book. This is the first uh, first Scarlet Spider. I got this at cover price. Oh, I got this for half a cover price. I think I got this at the doll the half off sale too, uh, for like a buck fifty. Then so like. If you guys read the read the Ben Ben Riley stories, a lot of people didn't like it because they sort of prejudged him and stuff. And I get, I get that. Like I'm a Peter Parker fan too, and all that. But um, they're good little stories. Like I I don't know. And and I liked. It's nice to sort of have a character who's outside of like the Mary Jane, um, Aunt May stories, where you like he has a different sort of group of side characters and stuff, and he's working in this diner and. I don't know. It's just, it's just a little more interesting to me to uh, mix it up every once in a while. And I, I like Ben Riley, So definitely, I think, an underrated book here. So pick that one if you get up if you guys get the chance. If you're a Spider-Man fan, 
Uh, and 119 after that, this one I think is the first Kane. He's a little more prominent these days than Ben Riley, but still. And last of all, Amazing Spider-Man 101. First appearance of Morbius. Um, this I got really cheap. I got for $20, but it's probably like a VG. You can see there's a fair amount of spine wear there. Good book, though. Like, I read it. Man, it's a 15-cent book. There's like 26 pages in this thing or something. It's so cool. Like, the story, you keep expecting it to end, and it doesn't. He's got the six arms from the disease. They set up a sweet, uh, sweet little... What's the opposite of a love triangle? Hate triangle between Morbius the Lizard and Spider-Man at the end. Set up for the next issue. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this issue is he like f swings around bitching about his life for the first like three pages and just complaining the whole time. You can see there's a little bit of wear in this corner too, which is kind of rough. But 20 bucks, hard to beat. I'll go for an upgrade one day, but it just sort of, I think I made a, a bid on it and I just never lost. So... Happy to have it in my collection because actually I really like Morbius. He's, he's one of my favorite Spider-Man villains. Uh, yeah, so that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I've uh, been watching lots of your guys' videos lately too, getting some new good tips. So hopefully I'll be hitting up my store and looking around and getting some more new books soon. So take care, guys. Talk to you later.